May I now request Mr. K. P. Narayana Kumar, General Secretary, MMBA, to the dais. Now I request the guest speaker, Honorable Ms. Justice Mridula R. Bhatkar, former judge, Bombay High Court, to be escorted to the dais. I invite Mr. C. Ajay Ghosh, Joint Secretary, MMBA, to honor the guest speaker with a memento. Now I would like to request Mr. S. Vino, Executive Member, MMBA, to adorn the guest speaker with a traditional shawl. Thank you, Lordship. Thank you, sir. Justice Mridula R. Bhatkar Ko Madurai Ka Hardik Namaskar. On behalf of MMBA, I would like to share a few words about the guest speaker. Ms. Justice Mrudula R. Bhatkar was a visiting faculty at the ILS Law College, Pune, for two years since 1990 and one year in the Department of Journalism and Thought Press Laws in 1989. Justice Mrudula R. Bhatkar was selected to participate in the Judicial Training Program in Gender and Law at the University of Warwick. Coventry, UK, meant for Indian Judicial Officers under the Indo-British Judicial Sensitization Program conducted by the British Council in conjunction with National Judicial Academy. She expressed support for the Me Too movement in India, noting that certain laws protecting women were necessary in the light of patriarchal institutions and customs in India. In 2017, Justice Mridula R. Bhatkar, along with another judge, Girish Kulkarni, and several other persons appointed to a panel by the Bombay High Court, recommended increasing the maximum compensation that could be granted under the Mano Dairya Yojana scheme, which allows financial recompense to child and adult survivors of sexual assault and acid attacks. Ms. Justice Mridula R. Bhatkar, was appointed as the chairperson of Maharashtra Administrative Tribunal, Mumbai, on 7th April 2020. Ms. Justice Mridula R. Bhatkar authored a book namely, I Must Say This, and also written 26 articles in the column of Marathi newspaper during the year 2022. Absence of no doesn't mean yes. Anyone can be a victim, no matter the gender or age. There doesn't need to be a weapon involved, and the victim does not need to have fought back or said no repeatedly in order to for it to account as rape or sexual assault. Most sexual assaults never happen by strangers in dark alleyways. Often, it's someone whom the victim knows or it may even be the romantic partner. Consent is an active agreement. It cannot be taken for granted. It is never implied and it cannot be assumed even in the context of a relationship. The courts in India, with passage of time, and after witnessing a huge number of cases involving charges of rape, have swayed their focus from against her will to without her consent. The definition of consent have traveled a long journey. The Honorable Supreme Court has raised a pertinent question with respect to evidence of a victim of sexual assault that why the evidence of a girl or women who complains of rape be viewed with suspicion, doubt or disbelief. With such position of law and considering the rise in number of malicious prosecution relating to rape or sexual assault instituted out of anger or unsuccessful relations, what would be the way out? Whether a trial to disprove a false charge, the only remedy, can a concern be recorded? How to ascertain such concern? With this now I request Honorable Ms. Justice Mithila Bhatkar, former judge of Bombay High Court, to weigh out all those queries relating to rape and concern in relationships. Please, Distinguished guests, dignitaries, my sisters and brothers, good afternoon. When I was hearing my colleague, Dhamma, uh, we have spent one year together in Bombay High Court. And after hearing his lecture on uh, artificial intelligence, I thought that uh, a time will come or time may come that in the police stations there will be some machine and a girl 
if at all there is offense is registered of rape the police will ask like a aadhar card put your finger it's a consent or there was a no consent some light will be there green means consent and red means no consent so that it will be very easy for the courts to decide rather the police to prosecute i chose this subject because there are many instances of rape continuous we all agree on the point that a guilty or the accused should not be acquitted at all and for offense of rape the accused should be punished stringently very heavy punishment should be there to him but today we come across many instances of false prosecution also there are certain different concepts which are not clear in our society and also to the police and the legal fraternity so i chose this subject sex without consent in simple language sex without consent is a rape so consent it should be we all know free conscious and it should be also informed when we talk of consent we have to necessarily think of age of consent this concept of age of consent it's not new the first time age of consent consent was it was introduced in 1275 year in westminster in the uk and it was fixed age of consent as 12 years it remained 12 years for 500 years so 1875 till uh, 1275 till 1875 it remained same and thereafter it was increased from 12 to 13 then after within 10 years that is 1885 the age of consent was increased and it was by 10 year by 1 year that is from 13 it was made 14 today in many countries the age of consent is 16 years in some countries 17 in some 15 it varies but in india we have age of consent is 18 years as india is a party to the convention repare repair as now i think today we are all trying to find out the how a particular word has come out etymological derivation of the word so i am also tempted that repare repair is a latin word repetitious is a is an adjective it means something is taken away by force it has nothing to do with sex but when there is a sexual intercourse without consent that means or against the will so that is there is a force is administer in cases of rape and consent this word consent should be a perception of woman Uh, madam elizabeth has mentioned about it that this offenses should be perceived from the woman's perception they should be seen to be from her angle and not of the man while understanding consent in the offense of rape the approach should be woman centric and not man centric i my subject is rape in context with consent in relationship in the beginning it was mentioned that i am going to speak on a marital rape uh, in a in a marital rape but i am going to speak on a consent and rape in the relationship which may be living relationship which may be love relation love affair or a friendship marital rape i am not going to speak because now uh, you all know that the delhi high court in 2022 has come out with a descending judgment and rajiv justice rajiv shakdar he has held that offense of rape or injury caused remains same 
irrespective of who the offender is. And now the Supreme Court is in seizure of the matter on marital rape and uh, we are waiting for the uh, judgment. But I would like to share one thing. Long back in the year 1998, in our class of the judges, eminent jurist Upendra Bakshi, there was some topic and we were discussing on a consent and a marital rape. And that time he said that uh, who say, who is of the view that there should not be, uh, I mean, the, this marital rape should not be introduced in the Indian Penal Code. I was the only one who raised hands that time. And I said it should not be. Then, uh, of course, with a great experience, uh, uh, our Professor Bakshi, he said that, uh, I mean, he remembered and he mentioned that long back, many years back, I think he said something 80s, uh, earlier 80s or late 80s. There was a discussion and this issue was placed before the House in the Parliament and only one, and, and that was opposed by uh, parliamentarian Nandini Satpati. And then he said that uh, I, after 10, 15 years, a one woman judge is saying no to the marital uh, rape in marriage. And um, that time I was uh, just, I mean, four or five years old judge. I mean, that judgeship. And 1998, working as a session judge. And now spending, say, about 29 years and the 10 years in the high court as a judge of Bombay High Court. Now, if you ask me, I think my brother judge is not here, Dama. I will answer like Alexa. Maybe, may not be. So I'm now waiting for the judgment of the Supreme Court, whether, I mean, what it comes. <clears throat> there are many, many ca genuine cases and also false cases. We come across many shares of consent and when the shares are mixed in the background of relationship, then this becomes a very complex issue. The acquaintance and acceptance of the relationship is presumed when we talk of consent in relationship and rape. In love affair, sexual intercourse is voluntary. There is no compulsion or there is no force. There is a difference in a statutory rape and actual rape. That is the point I want to make it. In 2013, Section 375 of the Act was amended after public outcry as a sharp reaction of um, Nirbhaya case and the age of consent was raised from 16 years to 18 years with a view to, but why it was raised? The, the purpose object was to protect the girls, to prevent the child abuse and so the age of consent is raised. The punishment was also made minimum 10 years in IPC and 20 years in POXO. My brother, Mr. Venkatesh, is going to deal with this topic elaborately, so there will be more deliberation on this issue. So I will not deal much on the POXO and consent, but of course I will have to, uh, I will be referring to certain cases. Uh, <clears throat> in USA or UK, the age of consent is 16 years and in US it depends on the state to state. The punishment is considered on the basis of consent depending on facts of each case. However, in India, irrespective of age of understanding, in many cases, the age is considered, age of consent is considered as a key issue. There are, these are the incidents of statutory rape. The these are these are and the statutory rapes are continuously cases are registered. Many cases are registered at the police station all over in India. See, these are the cases where there is no actual rape as such. In UK, there is a crime prosecution service that is CPS, and the CPS the CPS when the complainant or a victim approach, the CPS 
goes into the details, verifies, examines the matter and then takes decision whether offence can be charged and whether we should go for the prosecution depending on the truthfulness or the material before it. So it is, it does a work of filter, but we don't have such a filtering system in our Indian legal system. So the cases which are, I mean, if at all it is based on, we all know, a cognizable offence. Whether the offence is cognizable, it is to be registered. The offence, the police should take no cognizance of it. Earlier, there were love affairs, but every few, but very few instances were there of consensual sex in relationship. So even though a woman is cheated, and from the beginning there is an intention of a man of giving false promise to marry, the woman, many women, they didn't have courage to come forward and lodge complaint for rape. It was not possible because rape was a stigma. It is still a stigma, but our society though has not fully accepted. It is getting acquainted with the Western ideas of sexual behavior pattern and Indian man and woman relationship is changing considerably. So women are coming forward to lodge criminal cases under rape against a man for breach of false, uh, for breach of promise to marry. And then though there is a consensual sex, it is said it is, uh, it is registered, offense is registered as rape. In the case of Wisconsin, it was held by U.S. court and uh, uh, Professor uh, Elizabeth has also referred to that how it is looked and not from the uh, woman's perception and she has highlighted, I repeat it, uh, woman yelled and cried and but she did not scream and therefore she did not put utmost resistance and she just, it is, therefore it is read as consent. But we do also understood and we have held in the cases, in the judgments that now it is said that a meek surrender is, there is no consent. A meek surrender, it should not be concerned, uh, it is not to be read as consent. There should be a consent, informed consent. In uh, Malaysia or Philippines, very recently, the age of consent from 12, it is increased to 16 years, that is under consideration it was, and there was, there was a movement was initiated by a group of women demanding sexual equality, and they said, opposite to no means no, they said yes means yes. In US, if at all the difference of age of the accused, this is very important I feel, if the age of the difference in the age of the accused and a minor victim is three years, then different yardsticks of the appreciation of evidence and looking at that case are applied and accordingly quantum favoring the accused is uh, that is what is the, it is decided. I have come across one interesting uh, situation, I mean uh, fact. In France, age was in 2021, it is increased. That is raised up to uh, 15, 16 years. It was earlier less than 13 to 16 and that is in 2021. But the lawmakers in France and the people at large, they found that this is very strict to make the age of consent 16 is something wrong. Because uh, there are biological factors and so it's, it's wrong and that it will be very harsh to decide. So they introduced a clause and that is called a Romeo-Juliet clause. So Romeo-Juliet clause is clause where the age, we have to consider the age. Uh, difference between a minor and a boy. If at all she is a minor of 15 years and a boy is 18, 20, 19 years, then that Romeo Juliet clause, he should get the benefit of that clause and 
it is to be treated as a infatuation out of infatuation it will be folly to treat every breach of promise as false marry false it is a false promise to marry to prosecute a person for rape under 376 is not correct recently in january 2023 honorable supreme court in the case of nai mahamad versus state of nct or delhi delivered a judgment division bench judgment and judgment is authored by just honorable justice bela trivedi it was held that there is no misconception of fact in that uh, in in naim ahmed case it was a extramarital relationship by both the parties a woman was uh, married and the person who was staying front of her house was also uh, was he came and he, he, he they developed love affair woman was having three children then she was impregnated and then when uh, they she, she left the house and because he gave her promise to marry she left her house left children left husband and started residing with him he didn't come, he went uh, to his native place and did not come back so she went there and she found surprisingly it was at a shock to her that the that uh, that uh, that person was already married having children but she didn't object and the relationship continued for few uh, few few t- for furthermore she ha- she took divorce and there was some cause some thing quarrel took place and then she went and she registered the complaint on uh, for uh, breach of or giving a uh, false uh, ma- promise of marriage and did not marry her so it was rape the sessions court convicted the person high court confirmed and the supreme court acquitted and but uh, imposed a fine uh, not fine the compensation of 5 lakhs and it it held that there is no misconception of fact there is no misconception of fact when the relationship continued despite the knowledge of marital status of the accused woman in such relationship if raped now it is also a fact that she cannot be labeled habitual and that is what some what supreme court observed and we all know the prostitute also we cannot say that cannot be raped but prostitute also can be raped if it is without her consent of course against her will is if at all the force is um, applied then so without her consent so in section 377 uh, 375 the words used first is that against her will explanation and then there is a without her consent then further sub clause is 3 to 7 of uh, uh, 375 the explanation is given about the con- about consent i mean if at all the consent is given out of fear then if at all it is like considering that if at all the accuse he makes that her to uh, give impression he gives impression that i am a i am your husband and she in genuine belief they have sexual intercourse the these are the instances are mentioned and explanations are given in 3 uh, to seven unable to give consent and this uh, and at this at this time when we st- when we uh, look into section 375 then it is necessary to see section 1 uh, section 90 of the indian penal code which states about the consent and uh, it states about the the word misconception of fact is the this is mentioned in that section and so the consent given under misconception of fact is not a consent but we have to when we are talking about breach of promise to marry then it is not a fact it is not a fact within a meaning of the code that we have to uh, make a mental note in the case of uday versus state of karnataka the supreme court in 2003 while assessing consent is voluntary and conscious is under th- or under threat or due to misconception of fact has observed held that no straight jacket formula is applied 
and court must consider surrounding circumstances of evidence before drawing the conclusion. Whether every change of decision amounts to false promise? No. Whether the girl has sufficient intelligence to understand the significance and moral guilt of giving consent is a very important factor. She can freely exercise the choice in relationship, whether she has freely exercised the choice between the, uh, between the resistance and assent, she must, she must have known the consequences of the act. While understanding the difference between rape and consensual rape, Essex, the court must carefully examine whether the accused really wanted to marry or had malafide motive since beginning and other surrounding circumstances, strata, status, age, number of things of the victim and the accused. In order to come within the meaning of the term in misconception of the fact, the fact must have immediate relevance. When we talk of this understanding of age, I go back and it is uh, that I must refer this, refer to the judgment of Varadarajan versus State of Madras, which has taken place, which was decided by the Supreme Court in 1965. And there, the first time, it was a uh, three judges' judgment, authored by Justice Mudholkar, Justice Beg, Justice Dayatullah, and Justice Mudholkar. And he has, they have used this term that understanding of the age. This, if at all she is in a position to her capacity to understand the situation, matters a lot. Then I refer to case of a, like a, a consent in relationship. Relationship is a friendship and sometimes there is some kind of uh, attraction, some interest, sexual interest developed. Uh, in the case of Mohammad Faruqi versus State of Delhi, it was judgment was given by Justice Ashutosh Kumar, single, and this uh, subsequently it went to Supreme Court. The victim was American. She had come to she had come to India for her for completing her research and PhD, some languages. And uh, then she got acquainted with accused. They developed friendship. Sometimes, I mean, they had, they, I mean, she showed interest in him. He also showed. But when he demanded to have intercourse, she said no. They both were drunk, but she said no. When the accused pulled down her panty, she pulled it up. Again he pulled down, again she pulled it up. But sexual intercourse was forced on her. Her case was she was raped, but she surrendered because she had fear that she will be hurt, she will get hurt. So her stand was, it was a sexual intercourse without her consent. She didn't lodge complaint here. She went to US. She told the incident, she, she, was, she used to remain very upset, disturbed. She shared this incident with her, uh, with her uh, guide, a professor, and her professor told that if you are in such state of mind and if you think that it was uh, without your consent, go back to India and prosecute. She felt that she should go back to India. She came back to India. She lodged complaint. Offense was registered. In between, she shared some emails also with the with the wife of the accused, and uh, his wife uh, said sorry for the incident or whatever harassment. But when the case was registered, unfortunately, Delhi High Court held that there was a feeble no, and the feeble no is a consent, and the accused was acquitted. In many cases, on relationship, the instances of sexual intercourse are admittedly consensual. However, 
Subsequently, it is said that it was obtained by giving false promise of marriage. And now the boy had changed his mind to marry. Therefore, the act of intercourse would not have taken place, but only because of promise to marry. So it is rape. In such, such cases, when the girl is minor, the, the cases, they come for bail. And we have to also consider the stage of bail because the cases, uh, the trials will start after three, three, four, four years, five years, and so it will take time. So when, they, when the mat such matters, they come before us for bail. Uh, I have dealt with one case of Sunil Mahadev Patil versus State of Maharashtra in 2016. A boy was, a girl was 15 years old and uh, the girl and the boy was say 21 year 21 year old 20 21 year old and uh, there was promise to marry so i held that there was a report of justice uh, verma committee it was accepted by our lawmakers and necessary and significant amendments were made in 375 and 376 ipc at the stage of bail the court has to consider prima facie what circumstances the in the in what circumstances the offense is committed by the accused in the criminal law the court cannot ignore the intention or motive behind the act and that is important factor in the commission of offense so also to decide the quantum of sentence at the end of the trial so is the case of the bail when the case is lodged the accused is arrested we all know that it takes many years for the trial, an issue of bail is always important and prominent in the case of rape. When a girl is below, below age of consent, and after that is 18 years, after Nirbhaya's case, the age is changed, the offense is registered under POXO, it is difficult to get the bail for the offense of this penetrative sexual assault. There is no word as rape in POXO. At the stage of bail only whether the sexual activity was consensual is required to be examined. Accordingly, the case can be argued by the lawyers and decided by the judges. The overall consideration, I gave some uh, uh, guidelines to the, to the judges who are dealing with the POC, so that is a trial court judges, and deciding, and there are some seven. So, uh, that can be considered, I read. What is the age of the prosecutrix when, uh, who is minor? I mean, very, I mean, if at all the girl is uh, of, say, about nine years, eight years, ten years, I mean, she's not capable of understanding. Whether the act is violent, whether there are antecedents, the accused, whether the offender is capable of repeating the act again and again with the girl, when there is a likelihood of threats or intimidation to the witnesses or the victim. Whether chance of tampering with the material witnesses and their statements as recorded and the last. It is also to be taken into account in such cases that a boy in his early 20s deserves to get employment to plan and stabilize and secure his future. Uh, while coming to the promise to marry and if at all the due to some other reason if at all there is a breakup in the relationship then see what happens that nowadays the keeping sexual relations while having an affair before the marriage is not shocking as earlier it was a couple may decide to ex just to experience sex today especially Metros like Mumbai, Pune, Delhi, the society is becoming more and more permissive. Though unlike Western countries, we have social taboo and we are hesitant to accept free sexual relationship between unmarried couple, couples or youngsters as it is a very basic biological need. The courts and the, we, the members of the legal fraternity, cannot be oblivious to the fact of changing behavior norms and the uh, relationships between the youngsters and also adults, especially at workplace, we come across 
in the society and also the fact of ground realities like late marriages a major and educated girl is expected to know demand of her body and to understand the consequences of getting into sexual relationship today the law acknowledges live in relationship the law has acknowledged the law also acknowledges women ri women's right to have sex women's right to be mother and so also women right women's right not to be a mother to say no to motherhood thus i am giving the legal position thus having sexual relationship with a man whether he is whether her it is a conscious decision or it is to be tested independently depending on the facts and surrounding circumstances as in uday and karnataka is held uday versus karnataka each and every case and no straight jacket formula is to be applied if at all uneducated girl is from poor strata of the society and she is and a boy is from a higher class and educated girl is not then the consent given by her for and there is a promise to marry then the consent her the consensual sex may take a different color and that is also to be examined by the judges with again i come to back that should be the perception of a woman so consent is to be tested from that angle so every breach of breach or promise to marry cannot be said to be either i mean either either the cheating or rape a couple in love with each other may have may be having sexual relationship and realize that they are not compatible and sometimes love between the parties is lost and their relationship gradually dries it happens then earlier physical contacts cannot be said as rape we cannot say that whatever has happened that's a history and it was consensual sex can we say that it is a rape a marriage cannot be imposed on anybody as a as a uh, search of a life partner it depends not only on a physical compatibility but also emotional psychological intellectual bonding among the young by young people or adults it is a matter of choice related to individual notions and suitability emotional psychological comfort and the biological requirement thus while granting anticipatory bail also these factors are also required to be considered <clears throat> in the case of rape sometimes because see now uh, women also i mean uh, in mumbai i have seen that we come across delhi we come across uh, that young college girls they go for uh, parties then take drink they take drink and sometimes the something a stupefying drug is administered and uh, the untoward incidents take place some incidents of sexual assault take place so in such cases in the case of rape the intoxication cannot be an excuse for a boy if a girl is intoxicated it means mentally she is not capable to give free and conscious consent that is 375 all 3 to 7 it is one of the explanations when a woman says in the case of rape when woman says no for sexual intercourse it means that she is not willing similarly when she says yes but under intoxication it covered it cannot be always covered as a valid consent under section 375 of the indian penal code the definition of rape these are the two these all all ex explanations and exceptions are to be read very carefully when we study this or when we argue on this topic <clears throat> the term without consent has a wider meaning thus it covers broader area of her willingness wish and to have sexual intercourse 
if a woman is under intoxication influence of liquor or any stupefying drug then even though she gives consent it's not a correct to inform or a conscious consent on the other hand act of rape committed under influence of drug or liquor then it is not covered an exception under the indian penal code and that argument is not available to the accused that is a boy that i was intoxicated and so i had a sex i assaulted her sexually that is not available so the act is treated as rape for a boy but not for a girl while reading section 375 one has to refer to definition of consent and that is section 90 that is a misconception of fact that is to be understood properly considering the rising number of numbers of rape cases genuine and false or false after coming across the incidents where young lives are ruined due to ignorance of law i on this platform i feel that i that young generation they they Uh, young generation needs to be uh, legal educated more on law and it is to be impressed upon them that criminal jurisprudence and indian penal code are largely based on human psychology social norms and moral values in order to maintain the peace and harmony in the society at workplace now we come across that many women are working the women are working in large number happily they are out and earning so but if at all there there are and, and there are many occasions we come across that love affair take it takes place between a married man and unmarried young girl and if there is a promise given by a man that after securing divorce i will marry you and his failure to divorce his, his wife cannot be a reason or good ground to draw inference that <clears throat> the sexual relationship or uh, sexual relationship was not consensual and it was a rape that we cannot so whether the girl has capacity to take decision that is the i think a uh, litmus paper test that is to be applied to to, uh, to stop sexual abuse of minor law makers thought mere consent is not sufficient but consent should be restricted with a condition of age of consent we try to control and prevent sexual abuse sexual assault the our the legal fraternity and law makers after 10 years nearly 10 years of nirbhaya's case after the amendment in the indian penal code after 10 years it is high time i think to take a uh, survey to assess to take a follow up of the situation that how it has worked and we need to uh, think more on this issue considering or taking into account the ground realities and the prosecution uh, which are taking place even in metros women they try to, they remain single and also then there are certain Uh, they remain single or there are late marriages but they are not able to take decision of having a sexual liberty thus there is a separation of natural sexual feelings that that is uh, uh, then i mean you have biological needs but we say no to that and therefore there is uh, i say that if at all there is a promise to marry then only there was a promise to marry so i was ready for the sexual intercourse that is how it is justified it's uh, as a strange thing but it is done then it is uh, see i i feel that increasing age of uh, consent it is kind of we have we are telling the judge i mean we are uh, we are telling a girl that how she should be Uh, what should be her defense or how she is to be defended but what we need that we have to tell the boy not to assault that is very important what we say that uh, it is always say that beti sikhao beti padhao but i say that it is you have to say the beta padhao and beta sikhao that will lesser the offense 
we can make the law but we cannot change the nature biological instincts sexual curiosity and the feelings in the younger boys and girls cannot be suppressed only can be these feelings can be properly channelized the same feelings can be pre were present earlier also and however the sex was not easily available and accessible today see we can't turn nelson side to the situation uh, today's uh, position that even the children they are continuously handling uh, social media and the social media is available to them easily accessible to them on cell phones so that is we need to take note that this speedy change while looking at the issue of the consent in relationship and rape in our culture we love to believe that women do not speak about sex loudly we really love to refuse to accept that women also need sex and she can be an active partner in sexual behavior so the consent given by her in relationship sometimes yes means yes it's all always therefore consent is a very complex issue we are we are now at present i feel that we are it's my personal view that we are caught in western culture and the ideas of indian morality i think this phase it always comes in the uh, when the country is proceeding in every nation it comes uh, when there is a clash we try to create law without examining our approach towards the issue and the social behavior i conclude by so i make certain points so it is a time to think about the actual rape and the statutory rape in the relationship law is stringent on the quantum that sentencing policy law is stringent discretion of the judges on the point of sentence should not have been taken away considering the nature of the consent that is what i feel uh, the we i mean therefore what has happened the judges are caught in dilemma when there is a mutual consent for sex in the relationship and the age is of a uh, understanding age of understanding or the adults the accused by the accused be punished so there are even the then the accused are is acquitted and then there is a un cry that because the judiciary is always accused of two things that is a delay pendency and in rape cases there is a low rate of conviction so the nature of relationship and consent are the mitigating and so also incriminating circumstances severity of punishment does not always work positively in the society there are some incidences in, uh, where the judges are not sensitive we do accept but then appeal can be preferred basically taking decision is a very tedious and a complex job sensitization of the members of the legal fraternity so also the society at large is required so that we can have and what is necessary is a uh, more we have to correct ourselves and the mature legislation go for more and more deeper in this issue we have to think about the proportionality it is in civil law we have an asris principle of proportionality and also the venusberry's principle on reasonability so reasonableness so that proportionality is necessary required in a in a quantum like we say that like sometimes it is argued that but what if at all the offense of 302 is proved that is of murder then there is only no option but only to life imprisonment that is a sentence is life or capital punishment death there is no in between that is correct but that's a murder here there is a issue of the other person and that is a issue of consent and there is i mean there is in murder there is no such consent it comes the consent has very different uh, shades as many different meanings hidden meanings 
So <clears throat> I, 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 again I say that uh, what is the problem with us is there is an automatic conversion of the consensual sex into rape should be saved. That is, should not happen. And I also urge that to maintain appropriate balance between the peace, morality, justice and rule of law, it is necessary to also uh, to consider this uh, aspect of consent in detail and also uh, discretion to the judges is also necessary in this matter, it is to be given. So we say that a system, in the system, somebody is required to be trusted. So why not the judges? Thank you very much. I thank Mr. Raghavan for inviting me. And it's my honor to be here and to address the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Judge, for taking us through the painful issues and the unsettled questions on consent and relationships. May I invite Advocate Mr. J. Mohan to come over to Dais to give his observation about the topic. A very pleasant afternoon to the distinguished guest, dignitaries on and off the dais. After uh, hearing your Lordship's uh, lecture, I could demarcate uh, two extremes. One extreme is where no means no. Even if there is silence, it doesn't amount to an implied consent, it's still a no. And the other extreme is where parties involved in consensual sex on some false promises and on a later point of time when it is withdrawn, whether it would amount to rape or a misconception of fact. On one extreme we see it as a rape, it's not just a rape, it is a murder where part of the soul of a victim dies. On the other extreme, the accused becomes the real victim. Your Lordship clearly guided us from one extreme to another extreme by giving us a global approach regarding the various aspects against uh, the consent uh, given under uh, various uh, age factors. I came to know that recently the state has passed a circular where it has given directions to all the police officers within the state to not take hashed actions in regard to consensual sexual relationships of uh, minors in regard to mutual romantic relationships. But going th through your lordship's judgment, your lordship has adopted such a view at least 10 or 12 years before where your lordship has just said that mere age is not a factor. If the victim is above 16 years, her mental ability has to be ascertained individually to ensure that whether the such consent was given out of free will. So, and when I was further uh, inquisitive to know more about your lordship, I was uh, very happy to know that your lordship is also a poet, that your lordship has authored a book titled Poems from the Heart and Poems from the Court, covering all the practical approaches in a courtroom and uh, no wonder that all these thoughts comes from your lordship after not just by strict application of the laws but also giving a practical approach about the various social factors involved. I sincerely thank you lordship for coming down here to Madurai. We are all enlightened with your beautiful speech. Thank you. On behalf of MMBA, we thank advocate Mr. Jay Mohan for his mindful observation.